outing of her career, four shutout innings against number two UCLA. So she has found herself into a groove thus far. Pitch just inside as Oaks just lets that one scoot by, looking for a slapping opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about that, the longest outing right there for Mac Leonard, but I mean, what a confidence booster to do that against the number two team in the nation at the time. One, two, and Oaks swings and misses. Looking for the slapper opposite field. One away quickly here for Florida State. Yeah, see Mac Leonard, she's working again. That drop ball really actually is a screw on the outer side, getting Oaks to change and challenge herself and chase that pitch from Mac Leonard. Taking a look at the entire FGCU starting lineup here. Here you see Nikki Gibson following Oaks. Taylor Filla in the third spot. As a base hit down the line by Gibson off the first pitch she sees from Leonard. So a single to start things off for Gibson. Going down the rest of the lineup is Kaylee Roper, Caridad Estes, the designated player, and just her third start of the season. Neely Peterson, Tiffany Meek, Olivia Black, and Emily Chiarelli is the lineup for the Eagles. Now steps in Taylor Phillip. Swings and fouls it off the right leg. 0-1 into the dirt. Phila, really the heart and soul, the engine of this FGCU attack, Tiffany. Currently with the highest batting average of the uh, for the Eagles with 341, has started every game. Yeah. Rounds this one over to Harding. She will try and turn a double play, but that throw is off balance. Out of the reach of the glove of Flaherty, got a piece of it, but what could have been an inning-ending end, inning ending double play Keeps the Eagles alive with the slightly errant throw. Yeah, absolutely. You see the just kind of a little defensive changes right there for Florida State and Harding. Not new to playing third base, but I really think she just kind of let that ball get away from her. Very good, good job there defending and it just really takes that throw towards center field and Flaherty wasn't able to keep up with it. Look at the footwork may not have been exactly textbook. Maybe she rushed the throw slightly. Well, you have to really work it if you want that double play, so time is really not on your side. But first opportunity with runners in scoring position here in the first inning for FGCU and Kaylee Roper, sophomore, steps in. That's the first two pitches go by her, 2-0. and oh. Roper from relatively close by FGCU, Eagles are in Fort Myers, Florida. Roper hailing out of Venice, Florida, just a little bit up the road. Ground ball foul down the third base line, two and one. Eagles coming off a doubleheader yesterday down in Tampa, taking on the USF Bulls. Dropping both of those games to get their record right now to seven and six, so they are trying to avoid going 500 in this game. Fouled off the end of the bat, two and two, as Mac Leonard now draws it even with Roper. Yeah, what a long night right there for, for the Eagles and having to battle it out down there in Tampa and then getting on, I imagine, a bus to drive up here to Tallahassee to prepare for this game to face the number six team. I'm, I'm wondering kind of how they're, you know, mental and physical. They're athletes, so they're probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes a toll on you. Another foul by Roper. I was talking to D David Deros before the match or the, before, before this game, and he was like, yeah, nothing we can't handle. You know, <laughs> just a simple bus ride up. While everybody's sleeping. It's exactly what he drew up, probably. <laughs> he knew uh, on the schedule of what was happening. Leonard now, 2-2 delivery. Roper gets out in front of this one. Harding tags at third on the bag and gets the double play. So couldn't turn it the first time, but makes it happen here the second time to retire the side. Eagles get two base runners on board, but unable to capitalize. Harding makes up for the early air. No score, Knowles coming in to hit. 
Girls, this is their second time coming to the Unconquered Invitational. But back in 2021, the Eagles lost both of their games against the Seminoles. This means Florida State took a 7 to nothing win and a 4 to 1 win. We'll see if that one year break not coming to the Invitational has any positive effects on the field tonight. Trevor, what are you thinking? I'm thinking good hit there, Alex. First off, welcome to the broadcast. Alex Rivero here, our third member of our team. And the Eagles will look to get a W against the Knolls with Allie Holm on the mound, their ace, Tiffany. Starts things off against Kaylee Mudge. Yeah, you're going to see from Holmes really just low 60s, but can really spin that curveball and that changeup, and I think she's going to need that to kind of keep the Florida State Seminoles off balance. Three and three on the season, already her eighth start. Leads the pack in the nest for the Eagles, as they like to say. As you see Kaylee Mudge take the deep breath, staying focused. Looking for a solid at bat and a solid start for Knowles hitting. And she sees a strike, one and two. Mudge with an RBI double in last night's game against UNF. Let's take a look at the entire starting lineup. Mudge, Leonard, Harding, Katie Dack in the fourth spot doing catching. Flaherty, Kerr, Waycaser in right field. Bethany Keene at first. Josie Muffley at short to round things out. Mudge gets a hold of this one towards the scoreboard. High and deep, but it is tracked down in right field. And a hard hit against the wall. Beautiful job by Emily Chiarella. It looked like it was tracking and tracking and could have been gone. Chiarella did a nice job of getting in position and saves one for Allie Holm and the Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a great job right there in right field by Chiarella. A good piece of hitting right there by Mudge. Nice backspin on that ball, but Chiarella does not lose sight. She's not even afraid of running into the wall for her team. And look at that pitcher reaction. Very stoic. I would have loved to see her get a little excited, but she's like, my right fitter does this. Well, but you could tell Allie Holm was bracing the tension, grasping the fists, probably clenching. <laughs> she knows how much, you know, how important it is to get that first out, and especially against a potent lineup like the four season Seminoles. Yeah, you didn't see a huge sigh of relief, but mentally she definitely had one. <laughs> now Mac Leonard. Pitcher versus pitcher here in this two spot in the bottom of the first. Checking in at five foot 11, very tall, imposing presence in the box. Pitch just outside, count goes to two and one. A, a pure athlete is what you see in the box. I mean, she does it all. Just take a look at her numbers right there. I mean, she does everything for the team. Pitch, hit, defense. Strike and Holm is back to a pitcher's count of two and two. So far, I see Holm. She's really working that curveball. Not afraid to come in right now to the lefties. Did that against Mudge, doing it here against Leonard. So that curveball is looking pretty good so far for her. Back opposite field, but it is caught by the third baseman, Taylor Phillip. Two away here. Check in with the defense for the Eagles. See Villa right there at third base. In the outfield, it's Black Oaks, Chiarella. Villa, Villa, Roper, Chiarella, uh, sorry, Meek and Gibson are in the infield with Neely Peterson doing the catching duties for home. Now in steps Kaylee Harding. First pitch strike on the outside. Harding hitting 306 in 13 games this year. Second on the team in runs scored. Does a nice job of getting on base quite a bit, driving in runs. She leads the team in total bases with 26. And the two home runs she hit during the Clearwater Invitational kind of helps with that statistic as well. Two bombs. 
just kind of repeating what we talked about yesterday with the professional at bats. I mean, it's not always about the hits, right? It's can can I also take the walks? Can I get on base um, for the team just to get the team the opportunity to score some runs? And Harden does it all. She can drive them in, and also she can get on base um, and create some havoc for her team. Yeah, she worked a. Uh I believe it was a 15 pitch at bat last night against Ashley Connor for UNF. That was quite the battle, and she was able to earn herself a walk. Two and two. Harding getting the start at third base tonight. She was doing some outfield work yesterday in a rotating door at third base. Head coach Lonnie Alameda is not exactly settled on anything just yet. Fouled away by Harding. But, you know, with Mac Leonard, you know, she's does the pitching and she does first base typically. When she's not pitching, Tiffany, she is usually first base all the time. With that interesting dynamic, you know, you kind of move some things around here in the order and also in your defensive lineup which can shift a couple different players. One of those is Harding. She's a true utility player, though, in the field, can play multiple positions. Count now full. Absolutely. We talk about the depth of the pitching for Florida State Seminoles, but also really the depth of the defense in, in the roster of Florida State to be able to allow Mac Leonard, when she is pitching, to have somebody solid step in and play first base, and usually that's Bethany Keene. And so, you know, it allows the coach a, to really move and, and plug and play the pieces you know, for the best fit of who they're facing that night. Harding gets under this one into foul territory, but that will drift out of play. And you hear the clank on the metal covering here at Joanne Graff Field. Another good battle right here from Harding. It's just quality, quality plate appearance. So she's seen now, and actually that, I mentioned that at bat against Connor for UNF. That was the last at bat she had in that game. After the walk, she was substituted for Autumn Bell by to pinch run. So she's seen over 20 pitches in her last two at bats, and in her last two at bats, she's what? This even counters an at bat. It's like, what are you talking about? That doesn't even show up in the at bats. So Florida State gets their first base runner here in the bottom of the first. Florida State also with a lot of two out success against UNF last night. So just when you think you might have Florida State on the ropes, they don't really quit at any point, Tiffany. That's, you know, really deeply embedded in Lonnie, Alam Lonnie Alameda's program. They not just have the talent, they have the will and the pride to go along to really work any sort of, you know, anybody at any given moment in all facets of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's really just, it talks about the depth of that lineup, the potency of the lineup that at any point, any one through nine hitters and even 10, 11, 12, right? Um, some that come in to pinch hit can create havoc, get those base runners in, home runs, I mean, you name it. And so two outs, you know, to the Florida State Seminoles, I think it's kind of a so what mentality of, yeah, so what, let's still get it done, right? Still got work to do. Now Katie Dak, you got things done and Got the scoring started for Florida State last night in her solo shot. First three innings of that game, no hits and no runs, but started the change in the fourth, and that's when Dak struck in the bottom of the fourth. As she swings and misses here and is behind one and two. So this bottom of the first going a little longer than I think Holmes was hoping for, now up to 20 pitches. She can thank Kaylee Harden for that. <laughs> really just battling it out with her. Pitch down. Now two and two. Eagles covering just in case Harding was going. Two strikes and two outs. Not unheard of to go before the full count. Here's the two two from home. Dak gets a hold of it, it's hit hard, high and deep and gone! The Dak attack is running strong. Another home run for Katie Dak this week. Florida State takes a 2-0 lead.
Yeah, you talk about the DAC attack again. A pitch up in the zone that rise ball. I think Holmes is trying to get tight in on Katie Dak. She does a great job, keeps her hands inside that ball, stays through it, drives it. So uh, it's almost becoming like her favorite part of the field right now, <laughs> going for the left field wall, but and getting her things, her things going for her team. Well, Florida State got a lot of run production yesterday with left center field. This one, pure left field for Katie Dak. Boy, she been quite the monster in the four spot when she's had that opportunity. Usually it's Michaela Edenfield. It's Flaherty, Devin Flaherty swings to the first pitch. 0-1. The Dak's really making a case here, Tiffany, to really be a feature focal point right in the heart of this order. And you know, Michaela Edenfield's been there certainly in not in the starting lineup tonight, but Edenfield with her power is really, really part two. Flaherty with a little poker. Outside of the glove of Tiffany Meek at second base, and she gets on. So again, more two-out production for the Seminoles coming up here early in this game. Yeah, absolutely. You, you kind of talk about Katie Dak just being in the middle of the lineup, but I think that's why she came to Florida State, you know, to give herself the opportunity to compete against the best. You know, you're competing not only against the, the teams that you're playing, but also within you know, the team, and so having Michaela Edenfield kind of push both of them pushing each other, um, it really just sets up for some fun at bats here as we move forward to the season. Well, Janai Kerr certainly was had one last night. You got the game winners you saw in the opening parts of the broadcast here. Only Kerr's sixth start this year. Wings and misses, 0-2 quickly. But Kerr with a ton of athleticism out there in center field, cover a lot of ground, make spectacular catches. But solid at the plate as well. Right now hitting 294. Yeah, I don't even think we've seen the best of, of Kerr at this point. I think she's still waiting to kind of bust out. This one cannot get into the outfield as Kerr is retired by Kaylee Roper at short. But Katie Dak coming up strong here in the top of the first, setting the table for the Eagles, letting them know this ain't gonna be easy, folks. Two nothing Seminoles headed to the second. Water Invitational for the Seminoles, Katie Dak being one of them, as you saw here in the to the bottom of the first here, but had a nice job against Arkansas as well as Kaylee Mudge, Mac Leonard, and Kaylee Harding all really contributing big time here, Tiffany. Yeah, I mean, really good numbers from the four of those Seminoles. And really, I think you take just team-wise the way that they were able to compete against the top teams in the nation. Each team that they played was ranked in the top 25. And so it's, it's nice to just see those numbers um, from those four Seminoles. You see Kaylee Mudge with a hit in every game. Kaylee Harding, while not a true cycle in one game, certainly was able to get every type of hit over the course of that tournament. So Mac Leonard with a couple of bombs as well. Part of a very well-rounded group in Lonnie Alameda's dugout. See Mudge and now over to Harding. Swing and a miss by Caridad Estes. Two and one. This one's outside the zone, three and one. Estes in just her third start of the season, hitting 231. Has played in nine games overall entering tonight. And she draws a walk. Second walk of the season for Estes, and the Eagles get a leadoff base runner. I'm sure Mac Leonard's gonna wanna get that at bat back, just especially after her team took the lead there in the bottom of the first. You know, her objective is obviously to come out and allow her defense to work, but really just give some competitive pitches, and she didn't in that at bat. Um, we'll see what she does here. Yeah. 
Leonard now facing Neely Peterson, the right-handed catcher out of Wesley Chapel, Florida. And shout out to Wesley Chapel. That's my high school down there. <laughs> OPS at 502 for Peterson. Check swing. Did not go around, and that is a ball low. Leonard appealing down there to first base and waved off, so 2 0. the strike zone in this at bat two and one there it is Finally flipping a change up there from Mac Leonard getting that strike and really just shows how confident she is I mean for the most part working behind from Estes and now in this at bat I'm so nice to see her flip that change up good stroke though by Peterson of getting this one to the wall hit in the gap that'll be a stand-up double for Peterson as Estes winds up at third and the Eagles with two runners on and nobody out, both of them in scoring position. A threat is brewing here. Yeah, again, Peterson, you see Mac Leonard kind of working, trying to work that drop ball maybe inside, and it just stays in the middle, and Peterson does a great job not trying to do too much. He's hitting West Pitch, driving that to the gap out there in the left center, center field um, gap. The Eagles getting some energy going, and certainly when you're getting an opportunity against the number six team in the country, you'll take all the momentum you can as you got Florida State a little bit on their heels right now as the infield's in for a little players-only conference. And I think it's a good timeout, right? Kind of just reel things back in. you got some just defensive changes there. For the Florida State Seminoles still figuring out, you know, who's going to play where and just making sure everybody's on the same page here. Um, in this inning with runners on second and third. And so I think that was a good timeout. Just, just reel everything back in, calm everything down. You know, hey, it's still early in the ball game. Let's just work one pitch at a time right now. If I'm Mac Leonard, I'm thinking of working ahead, just trying to feed my team that, those ground balls and, and fly balls and let the defense kind of play behind you. We're going to get a pitch running situation here for the Eagles as Estes will be substituted here for Mackenzie Wittenberg, number nine for the Eagles. This is an FGCU roster, Tiffany, that has welcomed 13 newcomers to its 2023 roster. That is six freshmen, four Division I and three JUCO transfers. And coming off a season in 2022 that did not exactly go their way, 18 and 33. All right, Coach David Deros, you know, he's used to FGC really competing hard in the A-Sun. So last year not, did not exactly go into plan. Is saw a little quick clip and clip of uh, Mr. Deros. There he is, popping up back on your screen. Over there manning third base, the third base coaching box. Hasn't changed a bit from when I first <laughs> met him years ago. <laughs> you came through here at Florida State, but, you know, you were telling me, you know, Good guy, and David Deros, and you know, he's a very convincing individual with what you know he has down there at Fort Myers and the program he's built. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Dave Deros recruited me a little bit back in the day, as you see him. His 21st season, he's been there for a while, nine seasons with 35 plus wins. So he's not you know shy from winning, um, capping those A Sun champion in 2012, and then of course the 2016 A Sun Coach of the Year. So I mean, this isn't. A new coach, he, he's, he can go with the ebbs and flows of his team. Strikeout to Tiffany Meek. Leonard gets the first out. So Leonard getting back on track with the first out here on the top of the second. Let's take a look at the Florida State defense. Got Kaylee Mudge, Janai Kerr, Haley Wakehaser in the outfield. Harding, Josie Muffley. Devin Flaherty and Bethany Keene Keen in the infield. Katie Dack behind the plate. FGCU, even despite the fact that they had a little bit of a struggling season, though, Tiffany, they were able to, to defeat the Florida Gators in a game last year. And they're not shy of, you know, defeating 
you know, top 25 teams. Highest ever ranked win actually came against the Florida Gators in the 2012 NCAA Regional when Florida was ranked number five. So it's not unheard of for the Eagles to shock some people. Yeah, and I mean, really, just I think it starts at the top right there and Dave Duras and kind of setting that culture, that expectation to win. Um, it doesn't matter who you're playing, right? Um, so I think he sets the tone, and they're here to compete, and they compete, I think, day in and day out. This one shot hard, foul out of play by Olivia Black. Actually, correction. Madison Carr is actually in the lineup now for the Eagles. So she's taken over. We had Olivia Black tagged there in left field, so we'll assume Madison Carr has assumed that spot. Freshman. This one gets away from Dak, and it'll go to the wall, and into score is Wittenberg. So the Eagles get one back, and it's 2 1 ball game. Yeah, that pitch right there, a little drop ball just getting away from Mac Leonard. Dak wasn't able to secure it. An easy score right there, getting on the board for the FGCU Eagles and, you know, not really cutting that lead in half um, that the Florida State Seminoles were able to secure in the bottom of the first. And Peterson ends up at third base, so conference on the mound. And taking a look back at that replay there, Tiffany, was, wasn't sure maybe if Wittenberg touched the plate Take another look at it. Maybe the toe just on the <laughs> corner of the plate comes across. I think you give that to her. A great job by our team of taking a look back just to confirm that ruling. Yeah, game of inches there. And like she kind of pulled up a little bit. I mean, obviously we would love to see you step in the middle of home plate. So it's no question. Um, great. So it's very clear to everybody. But I think the umpire saw that and uh, you saw kind of a little hesitancy hesitancy from Mac Leonard, like, should I tag her, should I not? And the umpire said, yeah, she touched it. She got her toe there. Toenail almost, really. Toes on the line, toes on the plate <laughs> in this instance. It's a strike here, two and two now. To Madison Carr. Two, two, with one out here in the second. Fouled away by Carr once again. Carr, a utility player, has done some catching and some second base work. Freshman out of Ferndale, Florida. Finds the zone and rings her up. Leonard now with two outs here in the top of the second, trying to keep this lead for the Seminoles. Yeah, not a bad at bat, not a bad at bat right there by Carr. Really just kind of seeing some pitches, just Mac Leonard, just a little bit more veteran there, getting the better half of the freshie, and really just flipping that change up. He's so much confidence in that, throwing that pitch, and just catching Carr off guard. Pitch out of the zone is Emily Chiarella, who had that excellent catch out there at the right center field wall to deny Kaylee Mudge a hit in the top of the or the bottom of the first. Now steps in. This one just out of the zone, 2-0. Oh. So the Eagles have really worked a few good accounts against Leonard here. Yeah, they're not afraid right now to kind of take pitches. And Mac Leonard's, you know, not necessarily working ahead and pounding that zone like I think she would like. And the Eagles aren't afraid. They're taking the pitches. They're really, you know, having some good at-bats um, and, and really quality plate appearances. Obviously, the more pitches that you see, the more information you can gather to kind of take that back to your team. So, so far, so good right now for the Eagles and their at-bats. Fouled right in front of Katie Dack, and so the count now goes to two and two. Take another look here from the first of what Chiarella had to do. Didn't exactly get off on the right angle, but tracked it down pretty quickly and showcased the leather 
with the glove and said, yeah, I got it. I took a bump with me, maybe a bruise for later on tomorrow. Two and two, gets a hold of this, but an excellent job by Bethany Kane at first base, the diving stop, and the wherewithal with the glove to tag the... Maybe a future softballer taken in the action here in Tallahassee, Florida at Joanne Graff Field. Florida State up 2-1 as we enter the bottom of the second. Haley Waycaser with a first pitch swing and it gets out of the reach and off the glove of Taylor Phila. And Waycaser gets herself a double right out of the gates here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, she wastes no time right there. <laughs> Coming in, getting a good pitch and really just Pulling that ball down the line and Waycaser. Again, you kind of see, almost looks like that screw ball right there from Holmes. And Waycaser does a really good job really getting out the box there and challenging the defense and FGCU. And I would have loved to see her slide maybe in the second. I think it was a little bit closer than what she expected. But nonetheless, a stand-up double for Waycaser to get it started for the Seminoles. Just off the end of the bat, looks like it may have surprised Phila just a tad bit. But... We'll take him how you can get him. As Bethany Keene, who made the excellent defensive stop there to end the top of the second for the Eagles, now digs in, hailing from Bradenton, Florida. And up next, it'll be Josie Muffley waiting on deck for Florida State. Then it'll be the top of the lineup once again. This one grounded over to short. Roper fires it over to first and First out of the bottom of the second for the Eagles to retire Keene. Well, as we mentioned, this is the first game of the unconquered invitational that Florida State has been traditionally hosting for the last several years. So FGCU part of this lineup, along with Lamar University and Troy. Those two teams will be squaring off here over the course of the next several days into the weekend. Muffley. Showing the bunt, takes it back, 1-0. With that lineup, you got postseason Anna coming back home to Florida State as a, a coach with Troy, with the Troy Trojans. And so, you know, I think it would be cool kind of just to see her in that element as a coach um, and, and really just coming back home. Buffley executing the sacrifice bump to perfection. Right back over to Allie Holm. She'll take the guaranteed out at first, moving Waycaser to third, two down for Kaylee Mudge. But yeah, you mentioned it. You know, there's good coaching lineage now really starting to be generated from what Lonnie Alameda has done. She's obviously had a very dedicated staff on hand. But really, it's the players that have really, you know, developed themselves into coaching. As Mudge swings to the first pitch, this one drifting foul and just out of the reach of Roper, who was giving chase from the shortstop position. And Mudge will stay alive here, 0 1. There's Lonnie Alameda. What, the, what a quite, quite the resume she has accumulated and gathered over her long career in her 15th season. Yeah. 15 years, five time ACC Coach of the Year. And yeah, we talk about that. I think highlighting her Hall of Fame induction coming up, and I think is well deserved and what she's done and continued, you know, from what Coach Graff started. So, Mudge grounder to second base, but mishandled at second by Tiffany Meek. And so an air gives Florida State a run back, and they get to another two-run lead. Now three-one. Yeah. Really just hits this pitch off the end of her bat. I think Meeks was just got, trying to go too fast. Didn't really secure that ball. You know, obviously we always talk about ball first, ball first. And, and really I think it's just a testament to knowing in the back of Meeks' mind of how fast Mudge is, right? You don't have as much time. And so just really tried to shuffle that pitch over, that ball over and just mishandle it a little bit. I think you can see on that replay, David Deros put hands on knees. It's like, <laughs> oh, no, we had that one. Yeah. 
I mean, because it's important. I think, um, you know, Coach Dewars, he knows, right? He's playing the number six team in the nation. You don't want to give these good teams additional outs. They give you a rollover to second base, you want to get that out, right? You give They give you a pop-up and foul, you want to go get that out. So really just that mentality, you just don't want to give them the opportunity to, to have more chances to score runs and create havoc there as you see Mudge still in second base. So Mudge now in scoring position, 2-0 count to Mac Leonard. Deros, regarded as the founding father of FGCU softball because he's been the only head coach for the Eagles, 21 years. Now 3-0 count. First five seasons for FGCU were spent on the Division II level. But in the final two years they had at Division II, they amassed 120 wins. Set a school record 62 wins in 2007. So with that kind of dominance, it was really a no-brainer to put them on the D1 level. As Leonard draws a two-out walk, Runners now at first and second as looks like David Deros will head on out here to the circle. To have a chat with his infield. Yeah, and if I had to guess, I mean, really just kind of, hey, let's calm everything down. Just reminding them where we are. I know we're in the heart of the Seminoles lineup, but you got two outs, right? You got here runners on first and second. So plays anywhere. We just need you to knock it down, make a play. Let's go ahead. Let's challenge you know, the hitter and, and Kaylee Harding that's coming up, challenge her and let's see if we can get out this inning. Somebody make a play, right? Somebody make a play, don't be afraid. Let me see you get dirty, make a play, kind of lay out right now for your pitcher in home. She's, she's doing a pretty good job so far. Um, so you know, kind of just a thought process of let's, let's just work, calm down and remind you where you are with two outs. Home will face Kaylee Harding as David Deros is done with his conference in the circle. Alex Rivero, though, has more on Coach Deros. Alex. Thanks, Trevor. This is FGCU's 15th season as an NCAA Division I program. Deros was at the forefront of leading this change and since then has had a national impact on softball. Since the 2008 season, Deros has coached three All-Americans, two top 25 finalists for the USA Softball Player of the Year, nine All-South Region players, and one Dactronics National Player of the Year. Trevor? Thanks, Alex. He has certainly done everything he has possibly put everything into. He's done everything. He's put everything into this job. No question about it. As Harding with a quality hit to the wall, one run will score as Mudge crosses the plate. Here comes Leonard, play at the plate, slides in easily. Actually, had a pinch runner there for FSU. Matty Fry coming in, crossing the plate. And so a two out, two run double by Kaylee Harding and the Knowles are way out in front. Yeah, again, we talk about professional at bat right there. Harding seeing that ball up out of the zone, yanks it to the left center gap. Big part of the park and getting her teammates in. We talk about just Maddie Fry does a great job too, coming around from first base, sliding in, very good jump. Uh, but just again, just another hit on, you don't want to give good teams additional outs. You don't want to give Kaylee Harden the opportunity to drive, to do what she does, right? Drive in runs. And so, you know, that's the, I think the frustration right now, just coming from the FGC Eagles, FGCU Eagles. Um, but they just need to take a deep breath, kind of calm down, really just focus on getting this next out kind of stop the bleeding, give their offense the opportunity to come in and try to take some runs back. Well, if we've learned anything, at the very least this week, Tiffany, is that two outs mean absolutely nothing. Yeah. I mean, the Florida State has been firing on all cylinders with two outs really since the fourth inning last night against UNF. Pretty much all of their scoring has come with two outs. Yeah. And you've got to have that mentality, right? Um, if you're a Florida State Seminole, especially in where they're trying to go, because you're going to face good pitching, especially as the season goes on. So you are going to have to have, you know, good at bats and really be effective when you have two outs, because sometimes that may be the only opportunity that you have. Um, and so just having that mentality, of course, it makes you more successful, but also harder, you know, to get out just one through nine in the lineup. Really, if you're the opponent, you have to depend on your leaders to really step up in those moments. 
Allie Holm is one of them for the Eagles. Two and one count. Coach Deros told me and shared this information that Holmes, one of five softball players in the FGCU Athletic Department's Eagle Council, which is their leadership council. Says she's grown a lot in the last two years with the program. Ground ball over to short, fired over easily, and that will retire the side. But Florida State crosses three. They are getting themselves into a good position as Kaylee Harding breaks it open for the Seminoles here in the second. Knowles out to a 5-1 lead as we head to the third. Florida State after Mac Leonard departed for two plus innings of work. She enters with one runner on against the Eagles and already with the sixth best earned run average in the ACC here, Tiffany, with 1.15. She has certainly been a nice addition as the transfer from Arizona State settles in here to this 2023 season. Yeah, absolutely. And as she continues to kind of get settled, what you're going to see from Allison Royal too is really just high 60s, well, more so mid 60s, 63, between 63, 65. Really good rise ball, I think an elite rise ball, but really I think it's going to be her bread and butter is that change up, trying to keep people off balance. And she's also working on a good drop ball, it's an Arizona State transfer, and just really a, a dominant presence in the circle in Allison Royalty. Part of a seven woman pitching staff for Lonnie Alameda this year. First pitch gets away from Lepresti against Gibson. And Oaks heads over to second easily. So third straight inning to start this game off and the FGCU Eagles are in scoring position. Gibson out of Yorktown, Virginia. Fouls this one out of play. Freshman, utility infielder. Having a nice start to her season. Already with a single this evening, getting that average above 300. Out in front of this one though, one and two. Yeah, there's that change up there. Allison Royalty pulling the string. It just makes her rise ball a little bit more lethal. As you see her kind of just working again, that change up, nice down movement, off speed. Very beautiful pitch. One, two from Royalty. This one slips out of the hands and there goes Oaks over to third base. So Riley Oaks who came in to this game without a single stolen base, now advances two bases here in a matter of moments. Yeah, does a very good job right there. She immediately takes off when she sees that ball kind of gets away from Kyla Presti behind the plate. Just great jump, great speed, great read right there in Oates. Two pitches now in a row for Royalty. Not even getting to the chalk, let alone the plate. Three and two. And this one inside, so another walk here for the Eagles with nobody out. They'll have runners on the corners. Royalty with a 3-0 win-loss record already this year. Seventh appearance, has three starts. That's her 10th walk, though, of the season, so I think maybe if you... Maybe Lonnie Alameda would like to see a little bit more strikes, first pitch strikes from Royalty, if there's an area to improve, perhaps. There's your first pitch strike. Yeah, absolutely. Really just attacking the zone, right? I mean, you want to work ahead. You don't want the batter to be ahead of you. You don't want them to get more comfortable as they're in the box. Um, and really, you don't want to give the team any momentum, especially in this situation right now, Royalty's facing. 
This one popped on the infield by Phila. And Harding is under it for the first out. Pretty big out, all things considered. One away. It's going to be interesting, Tiffany, the pitching plan really for Florida State. It's something we talked to Coach Lonnie, Lonnie Alameda about entering this week. She was talking about how really they were trying to like, you know, go through a little bit of experimentation. You know, they really wanted to see who was going to start, who's going to come into relief, who really who matched up well going into those five big games in the Clearwater Invitational. This first pitch to Roper is out of the zone and maybe probably made too many substitutions in the UCLA game. Used six pitchers. Had Mac Leonard going pretty strong after four. So maybe in hindsight, she may have done things a little bit differently. Yeah. Fouled and nearly hit Estes in the batter circle. Yeah, but I think the mentality. The deck circle, I should say. Wow. Sorry, I think the mentality on that is really just, I mean, you got, to, you got the opportunity to beat the number two team in the nation, as you kind of see. <laughs> Really just get, I don't, it almost, it really did look like it. Yeah, Roper almost tagged her teammate there, and Estes needing the Matrix moves to get out of Dodge. Would not have been fun <laughs> to get hit Never by is. that pitch. This one tagged pretty high and deep to left center, and that is gone. What a hit by Kaylee Roper. And this game has drastically changed. The Eagles are right back into it. Only down one, five to four. What a hit by Roper. Yeah, it really almost looks like that off speed. Just kind of low in his zone. She goes down and gets it and golfs it right over the left field fence, giving her, her team really that boost of energy I think that they needed, especially after the big inning in Florida State, you know, putting up that three spot. What a moment right there for number 93. Her third home run of the season. Couldn't have come at a better time. Not the, not the worst pitch either, as you said. Down and in. Tough pitch to really go down and get, but as you said, you kind of took the words out of my mouth, golfed that one right over left center field. So a beautiful piece of hitting and Eagles showing some fight much like their A Sun counterparts North Florida did last night. And right out of the gates, Estes with an opposite field base hit. She's on for the second time. So Allison Royalty a little rattled perhaps here from this feisty Eagles lineup here. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta expect, right? I mean, you're, you're playing the best players in the nation. It doesn't matter what team you're facing. They're going to get hits. And so in Allison Royalty right now on the mound, hey, I'm talking to her. Hey, don't don't worry about that. Give me a ground ball. Let's roll a double play. This one hit pretty hard as well. Janai Kerr, though, drifting over to her left, and she will get under this one for the second out. All right, yeah, or give me that fly ball in that instance. You know, hey, trust your stuff, essentially. Just kind of don't try to do too much. Just really get back to being you. So two outs, as you saw Neely Peterson send that fly ball to Kerr. That'll be Tiffany Meek, Eagles second baseman. Try and see if she can keep this rally going here in the third. Pitch outside. I was just saying though about this pitching staff and the pitching plan really for Florida State, how Alani Almeida still toying with some things in the Clearwater Invitational going into it, really relying a lot with Kaylee Rafter, they really sit down and really talk things out a lot, but really the pitchers are also involved quite a bit on this and a part of that planning. They've, and she said she's always really had a deep pitching staff, but this year's group in particular really collectively contributes like right now. It maybe takes some time for everybody to kind of find a rhythm, but this year's group in particular all brings something different to the table and they all are engaged utilizing the tools they have has actually been, <laughs> for Lonnie, she said it was a little bit of a challenge for herself. <laughs> Yeah, I think she said it's she said it mentally exhausting <laughs> and sometimes kind of exhausting. I mean, just kind of dealing with, with a, a deep staff of seven, but what a great tool to have. I'm sure she would take that over having, you know, <laughs> the three pitchers. Um, but really just what a great tool to have to kind of be able to be involved in, in the planning and the, in the process and really getting the behind the scenes 
you know, learning. And I really think just that knowledge, you know, for the pitching staff to take that into the game. You know the plan. You're, you know, you're involved with the planning, involved with kind of the scouting. Really just gets that buy-in a little bit more. 2-2 Two -two from Royalty, fouled by Meek. She stays alive. And she also mentioned how, you know, these games now in softball are becoming much more offensive. You're seeing a lot of home run balls hit more often. You're seeing a lot of runs come across the plate. Case in point tonight, we already have nine here, and we're not even through three innings yet. And you know, Lonnie said, you know, this is something that she expects to see down the line, and you need quality pitching to try and offset that. Another foul by Meek. So a lot more strategy starts to really go into everything, and for Lonnie, her background is obviously heavy pitching. It's all just another element to the game of a challenge that's brought to her and and to test her her wit. Swing and a miss by Meek, unable to get the bat on the ball and put that one in the infield. But FGCU with a huge home run, a three-run bomb by Kaylee Roper. She's roping in Florida State, getting them closer within striking distance. 5-4 Florida State. Eagles kept game under her belt, so she can certainly chew up innings. Has pitched 34 of them so far this year. Comes in with a 3.71 earned run average, so already with quite a bit of work for Malding. And steps in here to see what she can do against the Seminoles. As Devin Flaherty will take her first crack at Malding. Fouls the first pitch. The Flaherty, Kerr, and Waycaser to start things off for the Seminoles here in the bottom of the third. As they are once again in another tight-knit battle with an Atlantic Sun opponent here in the state of Florida. Yeah, and if you're an Atlantic, Atlantic Sun member, right, <laughs> if you're looking at watching these games, this game last night uh, with the North Florida and just you know, I think the future is bright for them. Really just competitive games right now. No no quit. Scrappy ball clubs. I, I can, can't wait to see kind of what that conference does. Just the birds of prey in particular really <laughs> showing what they can do here in Tallahassee. Giving Florida State all they can handle. And really the response, Tiffany, the symmetry between the two games last night and tonight still coming through. You know, Florida State getting a lot of two out runs two out production, but UNF and FGCU have responded every single time so far with runs of their own in the next half inning. Yeah. It shows, it showcases, like you were saying, the grittiness. There's a lot of resilience with UNF, FGCU, the Jacksonville States. Liberty's a really good program heading to Conference USA next year. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like you said, the symmetry, because that's exactly what happened last night. <laughs> You know, with uh, UNF coming in and facing Florida State each time, Florida State has scored. Same thing here. Oh, nice little pick oh, at third base. Beautiful job by Phila, denying Flaherty a base hit. One away. She made that look easy. I mean, seriously, she made that look easy. Nice short hop. Nice pick right there by Phila. I mean, really made that. That's a tough play, right? Reading, especially moving glove side. So. Nice play right there, Suave, I see you. Nice and smooth over there, I like it. Scooping it like ice cream. Yeah. Delectable. <laughs> Very delicious over there at third base. Deny Kerr, fouls this one back into the screen. And really too, yeah, just to finish kind of that thought, just the symmetry between the two, but every time Florida State scored last night, UNF scored tonight. Each time Florida State has scored, FGCU has came back, you know, to put a dent in that lead. And so just a hint to, again, that scrappiness, that there's no give up, like all fight here. Pitch high, one on one And, you know, obviously these teams, you know, they're, they're here to obviously prove themselves and they have nothing to lose and give everything they can. They want to put their best foot forward against the best teams in the country. So they're going to give no quarter. They're going to leave nothing out here on the dirt. Two and one. Yeah. 
One away here in the bottom of the third. Knowles clinging to a 5-4 lead. Another foul by Kerr, now two and two. Yeah, really a defensive swing right there by Janai Kerr. Not something you want to see while you're up in the batter's count, but see if she can get a better swing off on a, a better pitch in this, this event. Yeah, this, when you have the two strikes, that's when you'll see those defensive mm -hmm. swings a heck of a lot more often. So you got to really find your pitch. Three and two. That is certainly not the pitch for Janai Kerr. <laughs> Yeah, really just ooh, gets away. It looks like almost like a rise ball right there from Malding. Just kind of gets away from her. And this pitch outside, so Kerr will draw a one-out walk. So David Diros throwing out his two best pitchers here in this game against the number six team in the country. Alex had rattled off a lot of highlight plays, or in terms of players that have gotten a lot of honors. 17 A-Sun All-Academic Team selections to boot. 23 All-Conference First Team choices. All part of why he's got over 700 wins in his career as the head skipper for FGCU. You see Hallie Waycaser. Took the first pitch in her at first at bat with a double. This one trying to scoot through the infield and it does get past Roper's glove. And so Kerr will move to second base and Waycaser's two for two. Yeah, again, Waycaser is coming up. Really, I, I mean, I, re I really think Roper could have gotten that had she kind of stayed down a little bit, just played the hop a little bit. But nonetheless, two runners on for the Florida State Seminoles, exactly where they want to be and kind of trying to take back some of those runs that they gave up at the top of this inning. Yeah, she really did not feel comfortable fielding that ball. Didn't exactly get a handle on that. Bounced pretty hard. By the way, we should note, doing the catching duties for FGCU is Madison Carr. She was... Implemented in the second inning in the batting order. So she's behind the plate. Here's Bethany Keen. Operating at first base this evening for Florida State. So trying to find a rhythm at the plate this season is Bethany. Yeah. Getting settled in Seminole. She was here last year. Transferred over from South Florida. Pitch high and away. One and one. Just her sixth start. Talked about how much rotation happens in this, in the field really for Florida State. Who gets to start where? Keen getting opportunities at first base when Leonard, when Mac Leonard is really starting off doing some pitching. It's really been her opportunity to get things going. Pitched down and Kerr thought about heading for third, but <laughs> Madison Carr alert. Off that ball low, two and one. Dean already showing that what she can do defensively is top-notch here in Tallahassee. It has an opportunity here to really get the offense going again. Bouncer over the pitcher and a tag out of Waycaser at second is Meek. So it gets the runner at first. And now runners on the corners for Florida State with two away. Yeah, that was a very good job but right there by Waycaser. I know it did not look like it, but you know, with her running to second, kind of stopping, backpedaling, forcing Meeks to go and tag her, really prevent it from an easy double play um, to end the inning. So I think great base runner right there in Waycaser, just kind of being, you know, smart and knowing the situation. Took the sacrifice, yeah. decided to just go down <laughs> with the ship. All for the betterment of the of this inning here, bottom of the third. So another conference by David Diros talking it over with the infield. And I think that's a really good 
spot to come in, but if you're head coach David Deros, knowing what Florida State has done with two outs over the course of these last couple games, it's tough enough facing them, with knowing the challenges that this lineup already has. He wants to make it clear, look, we got to get out of this inning right now. We're in this game. We've responded well. We're hanging tough. We just need a few more runs, but we've got to stay so strong defensively and stay sharp. Yeah, and really, too, also just noting where they are in the lineup, knowing you know, Muffley is not an easy out, of course, but just knowing that you're at the bottom of the lineup in number nine and trying to prevent the, t the lineup from turning over, just kind of reminding them, hey, just let's go right at her. Let's see if we can get her out. Josie Muffley would love to drive in some runs here for Florida State. Pitch out of the zone 2 0. Seen a lot of her at bats utilizing the bunt possibility. But this is not one of those times with two outs, so it is a pretty much a green light for Josie Muffley to just swing away. Yeah, Muffley's thinking about driving in some runs right now. <laughs> But hasn't seen a pitch that she likes. Works to the ultimate hitter's count, 3-0. Yeah, and if you're Dave Duras, I mean, just the pitching coach over there, I'm just, this is not what I want to see, right? I mean, you want to see Malden go in and attack Muffley to see if she can get her team out of this inning without giving Kaylee Mudge the opportunity. This one apparently really high in the zone. I thought that was a really solid pitch for a second. I was like, wow, Muffley really sold it. But, well, you know, home plate umpire Jim Cooper says, no, take your base. And so Muffley draws the walk. Bases are juiced. And now it's really back in the danger zone for the Eagles as Kaylee Mudge comes on up for the third time in this game. I don't know. Hey. Another substitution of sorts here is Ani Alameda. It looks like Travis Wilson over there talking things over. Yeah, going through that lineup. I mean, it gets tricky. Some of Coach keeps her lineup, so she has some of the lineups from like way back in the day. But literally, some of the things you would see on the lineups are like, what happened on this game? You know, you just see scratch out, move there, move there, just. It's amazing, kind of just, I think it's just, again, that level of detail and just knowing the game. She just knows the rules and move things around to make things work and shake it up a little bit. <laughs> Next time you talk to her, you might have to ask her, am I on some of those lineups that you still got? <laughs> yeah, she sends, uh, it's, it's really cool, some of the things she does to kind of just kind of remind you of the time, but she used to create scrapbooks. And so some of those lineups I actually have. Um, just, yeah, cool little note right there for Kocha. <laughs> An artist at her craft. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Both on the paper and on the diamond. <laughs> Mudge has been really good with runners in scoring position. A 500 batting average. 50-50 shot. Two and one. I would love to see Malding's teammates kind of just getting in her back, back pocket, just, you know, hey, reminding her, we got you back. You don't have to do it alone, right? Oh, and this, this pitch just nips the corner. Crowd did not agree with that one. Two and two. Big pitch in the at bat. That's why you get three. <laughs> Malding with a 2-2 a pitch. Mudge gets a hold of it at first base. Toss, but not handled by Roper. And two runs will cross the plate. A tough defensive miscue by the Eagles. And Florida State breaks away from FGCU once again. It's now 7-4. Gibson had the ground ball. And made the toss, but Roper just could not grab it. Yeah, she really does a good job kind of going over in that 3-4 hole. I think her only play was second base. She wasn't going to be able to turn around and get mu a mudge out at first. You know, so I thought that was a heads-up play right there in Gibson, but really just Roper wasn't able to kind of hang on to it. Maybe too hard, maybe caught her off guard, just wasn't expecting that. But really just lack of communication, you know. Hey, hit me at two, hit me at two. Probably want to hear from Roper, but worked out. 
Seminoles get two runs back there. Kind of maximize their lead back to three. And once again with two outs. And once again with two it's, outs. It's, it's, it's really unbelievable, Tiffany. Just, you know, for a club that obviously has a target on its back year in and year out, you know, they're, they're certainly, in any situation, they're well coached. They understand situational baseball. But the resiliency, they have the, the, the identity and the mindset of a team that kind of wants to maybe be an underdog. You know, just like find ways to stay motivated and just deal with resistance and adversity. That's something that, you know, you've talked to me about as well, about how adversity has been such a key component of what Lonnie Alameda is all about and what this team tries to drive itself and inspire itself to be a team that will not wilt, not quit, and rise to the occasion in moments that are really difficult. Yeah. Day in and day out, though. I mean, that's kind of what you, you learn as soon as you step on campus here. Um, as a Florida State Seminole, you know, just that adversity, how to deal with it, you know, putting you in uncomfortable situations, so what mentality, who cares, right? You know, when it's a cold day, you're playing, everybody's cold. You know, when it's hot and you're playing, everybody's hot, right? Um, everybody's going to strike out. Everybody's going to make an error. So what? What are you going to do? How are you going to respond? How are you going to deal with that adversity? So it really just, again, just speaks to the culture. This time, Roper able to handle the toss. From second base, Tiff. What's been an action-packed game? Three innings going by. Certainly could be in for some more fireworks. From Joanne Graff Field in Tallahassee, Florida. Trevor DeGroat, Tiffany Brown, Alex Trevero. All happy you're here with us, folks. Allison Royalty go back to work, dealing with 77 degree heat here in a mostly cloudy atmosphere as night has descended. A muggy winter day here in Tallahassee. Spring's trying to come. It's trying to, it's trying to work its way in there. It'll be here before you know it. We're waiting on you. As here's Olivia Black making her first at-bat of the evening. Tries to drop the bunt, very quickly scooting to first base, but this one drifts foul down the batter's path here towards the FGCU dugout, one and one Black out of Fort Pierce, Florida. Another one of these freshmen getting some opportunities here in the FGCU lineup. In fact, four freshmen got the start tonight. Two and one. So far, so good, too, from those freshmen. I mean, think about Nikki Gibson being one of them. Base hit early this game, They're just fearless. And Maybe a little nervous. And it's Chiarella with a big catch in the first yeah. inning. See Black right here. I mean, she's having a pretty quality at bat. I think working the count. Seeing pitches, not chasing too much. Well, as we mentioned, about half this FGCU lineup, over half of it, completely new from a season ago. Six freshmen among them. Swing and a miss by Black. And so it's 3-2. As Royalty looks to get back on track. Her first inning of work did not go as planned. Gave up a three-run home run to Kaylee Roper. Daytime chance get going, and that one gets away. And so another walk. Allowed by Allison Royalty. You got a speedy Olivia Black at first base. Two for two this year in steals. For a kid who's only made three starts, not exactly getting all the at-bats. In fact, only seven entering the game. So when you have two steals already, mightily impressive. Doing pretty good. Quality at-bats, too. 
to give herself the opportunity to get some stolen bases. In fact, she's only got one hit this year, too. Nice. One walk, so the time she's been up on the base pass, Olivia Black has not wasted time trying to make her way to get back home, at the very least get into scoring position. Here she goes, takes off the Presti throw not in time, and so there's the third steal by Olivia Black on the season. Ties Emily Chiarelli for the most for the Eagles so far in 2023. Yeah, very good jump right there. And Black sliding straight in second base. That throw kind of taking Flaherty up the line a little bit. So class she made it out there safely. The aggressive mindset not going away for FGCU. Drops the bunt. Does Chiarella, but foul. So now it's a one-two count. And Chiarella's job right now is to have a quality at bat, right? So whatever that looks like to get Black over to third base or to get herself on base. Just to turn that lineup over to Oates and top of the lineup. One, two. In the dirt, there goes Black. And Lepresti can't even get a throw off and Black moves into third base. Count now two and two. You were touching on it. If you're an Ace Sun team checking in tonight, don't know, you may have a game going on, but if you're watching some tape eventually, this is the kind of action you're gonna see. Very aggressive style as this one caught by, Jan oh, Kerr dropped it, almost had it. She almost plucked it off the grass, but could not control it. And so another run will cross the plate for the Eagles. It's seven to five off the base hit by Chiarella. Yeah, and really you see Chiarella just kind of pokes that pitch, that outside ball. And I don't know if Kerr really caught that and she lost it on the transfer. I think really, you know, that's kind of just a question out there for Janai Kerr. I mean, she really just scooped that kind of game out of nowhere. I thought that was falling pretty easy, but she came out of nowhere and scooped that. I really think it just was off the off the transfer when she went to go throw, but I'm not wearing blue today. <laughs> I'm not the umpire. That's just my opinion, just looking at the video, you see. I am wearing blue, but I'm not licensed <laughs> for collegiate softball umpiring, for the record. Even though, fun fact, my first ever job was actually as a Little League umpire, believe it or not. So. <laughs> back in my high school days of, of all things, but, but yeah, it did look like it may have bounced beforehand as Lonnie Alameda is at least having a discussion with Jim Cooper. No challenge happening, but you know, Kerr had a, an unfortunate moment in yesterday's game as well. She thought she secured a catch. Much easier than the one we just tried to see in terms of the play it was in her glove and it just popped out and a run came across the plate for the Ospreys. So we'll take another look from the center field camera angle. Yeah, I think that looks actually pretty solid in terms of it staying off the grass, but on the tip of the glove, just did not get it into the mitt. One attempt by Riley Oaks, 0-1. Of course, the umpires don't have the ability to look at the replay like we do. Um, not right now, anyway, so call stands. <laughs> and another run for the Eagles. Girello went from first. Looked like a hit and run call, but fouled away. Oaks, a two-way star for the Eagles. We mentioned how FGCU beat Florida last year. They also had another ranked win, another opponent against a win against a ranked opponent. And Oaks was essential in that one. That was against the number eight Texas Longhorns in Fort Myers. She was actually credited with the save in the upset win. Oaks has only made one appearance so far in the circle. Right now, her focus is on how do we tie this ball game up? Absolutely. Royalty two and two. I mean, right now, just 
royalty laboring a little bit, not really, you know, attacking the zone. Just the Eagles are really working her, making her throw additional pitches. You know, the competitive takes, they're taking them. So you catch Sander Cock. Emma Wilson also getting some work in the bullpen area. So Allison Royalty, 15 balls, 21 strikes. Not exactly the numbers you want to see and already given up a few walks tonight. So, and even this inning gave up the leadoff walk to Black and she scooted her way across the bases and all it took was a hit to the outfield to get her home as the force at second base. Good play by Bethany Keene, tossing it over to Josie Muffley to get the lead runner, Chiarella. Yeah, that's a very good play right there by Bethany Keene at first base, just moving to her glove side again, kind of very similar to the play that happened last inning. But you see, she really just takes it right from Devin Flaherty. But that's what you want to see. You want to see, you know, your corners being aggressive. Let, let your middles kind of back you up. But hey, have that mentality to go get it. And then again, just smart flipping it over to Muffley. That's her only play. So again, made another tough play look easy. Foul back is Nikki Gibson. It's one of those plays, Tiffany, under normal circumstances, you probably let your second baseman take that one. But obviously with a lead runner at first base, keen, very keen and aware, <laughs> knowing where to go with that. If you can track that one down, put it in the glove and get the lead run or the lead runner out at second base. So heads up play. Exactly. Right. Tech, very textbook fielding right there. Yeah. No, no, you hit that kind of on the head just obviously the play would have been different had there not been a runner at first base because that would have been a very hard play for Bethany King to field and then turn and you know flip over especially with the speed of Oak so just being like you said very keen aware <laughs> of the situation that's just being smart yeah you're gonna need a lot of uh, a lot of dependence Allison Royalty needing to come over from the circle to cover first base Tough for your second baseman to cover first on that run, that kind of play. But Florida State's defense sharp in that sequence. Popped up, foul territory. Harding over by the netting and the fence of the opposing dugout. Two away for the Eagles here in the top of the fourth inning. In steps Taylor Phila. Grad student out of Fort Myers, Florida, destined to be an FGCU Eagle, clearly. This one ripped down the left field line, foul. I was just thinking she probably wants to get in on the fun a little bit. I mean, pretty much their best hitter here for the Eagles. Actually, it was a transfer from USF. So coming back to the home stomping grounds. There's a Bishop Moreau graduate in high school. Swing and a miss. Gets away from Lopresti again. And Oaks quickly over to second base. Two strikes and the Eagles get another runner in scoring position. Hasn't been easy for Lopresti. And Katie Dak as well. A couple pitches just getting away from the Seminoles catchers tonight. Yeah. 0 2 pitch. Bouncing just down the third baseline, but Harding lets it bounce foul. So the count remains the same. Florida State really with three, four catchers really on their roster. Dak got the start, Lopresti been here in the program. Of course, Michaela Edenfield, star catcher of course, powerhouse hitter. And Maddie Fry, utility player, can also do some catching to back things up. Swing and a miss down in the dirt as Florida State 
takes care of business with the throw to first to retire Phila. But the speedy Olivia Black gets into scoring position with two stolen bases, and all it took was a base hit that Kerr could not handle to get FGCU another run. They're hanging in there, down by two. Florida State into hit. Alex Rivero's got a scoop on Florida State. What you got for us, Alex? Thanks, Trevor. With Florida State softball, the work is worth it, and you can tell. These girls in the offseason worked so hard on and off the field, and it really shows because Coach Alameda told me, as a little secret, that they have it takes what it takes wristbands, and these teams' wristbands really emulate and really show that hard work that they put in in that offseason. Trevor? Not so secret anymore, Alex. We appreciate you <laughs> sharing that, though. Secret scoop, inside scoop right there. First pitch to Kaylee Harding is a ball from Malding. You know, Coach Lonnie, Lonnie Alameda, this is what they like to call Team 40, 40th season for Florida State softball. Always finding team mottos is usually a theme throughout college sports to try and unify your message and your team that makes you unique this year. Boy, that that message kind of exemplifies, you know, you get you you put in, you get out what you put into it. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, it's always a a motto, a theme, just kind of giving you that extra boost and really the focus of you know why we're playing this year, right? What's our motto? What's our goal? Kind of uniting that, getting everybody, like you said, on one one accord and and playing. Uh, for something so always enjoy hearing kind of what's what's the new what's the new theme this year for the team well certainly Kaylee Harding has put in that work she's been rewarded with delivering the goods for Florida State you see Avery Weisbrook looking on and there's Michaela Edenfield sitting down as well so everybody just joining in and sitting back and taking it all in Fouled away, two and two the count now to Harding. Oh, those wristbands and just the motto, just really just showcase, showcasing, obviously you get out what you put in, but you have to go out and take it too. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, nothing's given to you out there. You have to go out and earn it. Sure, your opponent might do some slip ups sometimes. You may get some lucky breaks, but you have to take advantage of every opportunity. And here's another one for Harding. She's going to dig in for second. Play. Throw in. Sliding in safely. No tag applied. And so Harding with a leadoff double for the Seminoles. Now two for two. Hot hitting continues to be good for Kaylee Harding. Yeah, and Kaylee Harding really does a great job. I mean, that's a really good pitch, but what a better piece of hitting right there for number eight. Really keep her hands inside that ball, driving that low and inside pitch down the line. She hit it so hard <laughs> that, you know, it's not like an automatic double. She had to work to get the second out of the box. She literally was like, I'm, I'm taking this double, sliding in hard at second base. So uh, another professional, I bet, right there for number eight and Kaylee Harden. Well, she love watching her hit. She gets to rest and recuperate after <laughs> turning on the afterburners, and Christina Hartley will pinch run at second base. Well-deserved rest right there. <laughs> Hartley has been getting some time at third base where, Hart, where Harding is tonight. So that might be a defensive substitution potentially for the remainder of the game. But you do have the flexibility in softball versus baseball. Baseball, once you get substituted, you're done for the day. Softball, not the case. Yeah. 0-1 here off the foul by Katie Dack. We've got the scoring started tonight. Real clear, real clear. Facing Claire Malding. This one well low and into the dirt. 1-1. One one. Alex has more on Katie Dack. Alex? Like we'll get back to Alex at some point. Technical difficulties. We apologize for that. Two and one. But certainly Tiffany Katie is 
shot out of a cannon this year. Transferring out of Texas A&M, getting more playing time and opportunity. Yeah, I mean, shot of a cannon, I think is <laughs> it's like an understatement. Just really, I mean, I think also just a testament to her just stepping in. She just transferred over, right, um, in the break. And so stepping into, she wasn't here in the fall, didn't really get acclimated with the team. I mean, they've welcomed her, welcomed her in. She's made almost like a nice little seamless transition and just picked up right where she left off last year for the Aggies. Off the glove of Malding, and I think she felt the effects of that one. Hard shot, and Dak ends up at first. Runners on the corners as Hartley goes to third. There's still nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, not really sure right here what happened. Dak hits that very hard. Just really just, I think really just gave up on it and Malding, you know, and kind of beating herself up for not grabbing that right off the bat. But who knows? She could have just stayed with that, flipped it over and got the out and Dak. But kind of froze in time. Yeah. Looked like thinking she may have had it. And then the late reaction of knowing it was pretty close, but and just allowed Tiffany Meek to collect that ball and try to make a play. Looks like we looks like we are going to have a pitching substitution here. So Malding will depart. Bailey Haggard will take over. So she'll get her introduction after this break. Knowles with runners on the corners, getting another threat together here in the fourth for FGCU in the circle. Takes on Devin Flaherty here in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch strike to Florida State's second baseman. Runners on the corners for the Seminoles with nobody out. And Florida State with a 7-5 lead. Ground ball over to second and Meek having trouble with that. Will have to go to first as Hartley crosses the plate. So Florida State tacks on another run. Now eight to five, one out, and a runner on second. Yeah, Meek again, just moving too fast, right? I mean, I think just the kind of the speed of the Florida State Seminoles maybe getting in, in the back of her mind and just, just moving too fast, trying to flip that double play. Didn't have the ball, but luckily she was able to get an out. Actually, I gotta make a correction there. Looks like Megan Ricks is at second base now, so Sorry, substitutions Meek. going over. It's all good. That's my mistake too. Janai Kerr, fly ball to right field, tagging his deck at second, and she will go to third base. So now two outs in the bottom of the fourth. So Bailey Haggard quickly gets two Seminoles to go back to the dugout. Haggard coming in and doing a nice job. Seventh appearance on the season, or eighth this year, I should say now. One and one, two, four, nine, earn run average. Strike to Waycaser. Has three starts on the year as well. So for David Deros, really the three pitchers that have made multiple starts this year in this game, trying to Keep Florida State from crossing the plate anymore, allowing their offense to try and work their way back. There's been a run scored in every half inning of this game with the exception of the top of the first. <laughs> it has been quite the active night. From both teams. I mean, just. Oh, to the way, Kaser. And Ricks tosses it over to first. And the damage is mitigated with just one run for Florida State. 8-5 Knowles as we go to the fifth. Coming up next. Mm. Pitchers than they've had pitchers. <laughs> I don't know if that's ever happened before, but nevertheless, Area 51 is back up and running here in this game. As FGCU will bring Kaylee Roper, Caridad Estes, and Neely Peterson do up. Part of the order, essentially, right in the middle, as Allison Royalty will try to get back on track and get a scoreless frame here for Florida State. As we were mentioning here in the fourth inning, run has been scored in every half inning except for the 
First one. Pitch inside to Roper. Should be like the goal right now. Like <laughs> Let's have a clean inning pitching wise. Yeah. Why don't we, huh? Both sides. Eight runs, eight hits, one error for Florida State. Five runs, five hits, one error for FGCU. Really, there's been a few defensive miscues by both teams that have allowed both of the offense to, to really jump at some opportunities here and take advantage of those miscues, Tiffany. And I know it's not conference time yet, and you know, you're still trying to maybe feel things out just the third week of the season, but these are those moments where you try and find that rhythm now. This is the part of the season where you're trying to really get dialed in to really hit your stride. Popped up here on the infield, and Flaherty with the underhanded catch from deep at second base, one away here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, and just on that note, I mean, great jump right there by Flaherty coming in to make the catch, but just on that note, you know, you're still early in the season, so you're, you're trying to figure out, you know, where are we gonna play, kind of figuring out the matchups, right, when you're kind of getting into the pitching side of things and, and really just figuring out a little, little things that you're working on. So if I'm working on a drop ball, I want to solidify that. You know, when, for when we get into conference, that pitch is on point, right? And then obviously down through the end of the season. So I, a lot of moving pieces. I think of it like a puzzle, right? Just kind of fitting the pieces in and figuring it out and see what it's going to look like down towards the end of the year. And the, and the beautiful thing about our sport is it may not look like what you think it's going to look like towards the end of the year. Um, you know, you may have a hitter that's just hot. you got to put them in the lineup. So it's cool. Karen Ann Estes, the designated player for the Eagles, is now facing off against Royalty. Draws a 2-1 count for the first three pitches. Talked about the drop ball. That's something Royalty's really trying to work on herself. It's not gone easy tonight for the Arizona State transfer. Yeah, she's had to work a little bit. Had to work a little bit. And, but you know what? Good pitchers, they figure out how to kind of get out of those tough innings. You're not going to have your best stuff every night. So you got to figure out. We talk about that adversity, right? I mean, that's exactly what it comes down to. And, you see Royalty figuring it out, but that changeup is something that's been on <laughs> all night. And you saw it there, just flipping that change. Down now full, a drop ball. Well out of the zone. Yeah, and I think once she gets that pitch, it's gonna just take her, her game to the next level because she already has an elite rise ball. So really just learning how to change that eye level up and down. Those, those are two, I think of the best pitches to have to compliment. This one, one hits another. Estes, and so she will jog on over to first. So she has reached first base in all three of her appearances at the plate. One for one with a single and a walk, and now hit by a pitch. Yeah, again, you kind of see maybe a little screwball get away from Royalty and hits Estes. She takes it like a champ. It's no big deal, right? I'm getting on base for my team, so. So another runner on for FGCU. Peterson with a first pitch swinging strike. swing and a miss so royalty out ahead 0 and 2. That change up again. That might be the first time she's been ahead 0-2 in this entire appearance. Yeah. It's been quite a grind for royalty tonight. Nonetheless she's figuring it out. What is on is the change up. <laughs> right? So gotta go with what's on it sometimes. Swing and a miss. Peterson not able to find bat to ball. Going fishing for that one. Two away here in the fifth. 
Yeah, kind of see getting that change up looks like just flipping it, getting Peterson to chase. And that's what a good change up does. So, you know, Royalty's flipping that change up for a strike, even though that one was in the dirt, but you, you have that in the back of the mind. You get Peterson to chase, get that chase. So, really good job, good pitch. Good out right there for Royalty and Seminoles. Here's Megan Ricks making a trip to the plate. First time. Ricks has eight starts on the year. There's a strike from Royalty now, one and one. Rick subbing in for Tiffany Meek right now in the order. Full swing on that one, trying to drive it to the opposite field, one and two. Kerr, however, manning center field well over to the left side, so might be some scouting going on right here <laughs> with how far Janai Kerr is positioned over from center. Florida State loves to sell out, right? Um, and if I'm a hitter, I know what I'm getting. And they're going to challenge you with it. <laughs> but you still got to hit it. One, two. Driving it is Ricks through the infield. That's going to scoot through for a base hit. Keeps the top of the fifth alive. So Estes at second, Ricks at first. Fourth hit given up by Royalty. Sixth of the game for FGCU. Yeah, Ricks again, and that pitch, middle of the plate. And so Ricks was able to kind of yank it through the 3-4 hole, talking about just a little bit earlier and selling out. And so what's important for the pitcher, if I'm going to sell out, is you got to hit your spot, right? Um, so obviously they were anticipating that because you see Way Case are still kind of hanging out over there in right field. It wasn't too much of a shift, but good job right there by Ricks. And, Giving her team the opportunity to score some runs with two outs. Olivia Black back up at the plate. Showing bunt. Florida State's left side of the infield working in. Seeing that coming, <coughs> excuse me, as Christina Hartley is at third base right now. Muffley there to back her up at short. Looking for a, a slapper per, potentially. Mm -hmm. If not going to bunt, that's the next, bec, next, bec, the next best thing. If I can speak tonight, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. Yeah, you see the infield pulled in, but they know black speed, right? I mean, she's got elite speed. We kind of saw her work around the bases. So got to give yourself the opportunity to make a play and, and throw her out. And, and sometimes, too, you know, that may not be your – your best play if she, say for example, just kind of deadens the ball in front, maybe your play is at another base. So just have that in mind as well. In this situation with the runners at first and second. Pitch high, two and one. Nobody warming right now in the FSU bullpen. We saw Emma Wilson and Katherine Sandercock getting loose just in case. They might be all ready to go at any moment's notice, but for now it's Allison Royalty's game. Well, that one really looked good, but it's a ball low, three and one. Yeah, I think two pitches right there. I mean, really just paints that outside corner. I don't know where that missed. But again, I'm not wearing blue, so. It's a great training <laughs> job by Edenfield, nonetheless, but does not get the call from home plate umpire Jim Cooper. It's probably good I was not a pitcher because my attitude as a hitter sometimes <laughs> towards the umpire was not the best, so I can't imagine being a pitcher. Swing and a miss by Black. <laughs> Count now full three and two.
Gut check time for both Royalty and Black. Who's going to win it on this 3-2 pitch? Black with the discipline as Royalty kicks up dirt, frustrated that she didn't bite. And the bases are loaded. Tying run is at first. With the speedy Black. And here comes Lonnie Alameda. What she's all about. A pitcher that really works pitcher to contact, pitch to contact. Doesn't get a lot of K's, but certainly will get a lot of outs. That drop ball is as good as it gets. And for more on Katherine Sandercop, we welcome back Alex. Kat Sandercock had a great game yesterday and marked her 82nd win and 145th appearance in a game since 2019. She is now currently ranked at number seven in FSU's top 10 career appearances and seventh in career wins. After talking with Coach Alameda, she said that these numbers didn't appear out of thin air. She said that Kat took time in the offseason, not only in the bullpen, but in the weight room to build and perfect her mechanics. I'm really excited to see if Kat can jump a few places in both of these lists by the end of the season. What do you think, Trevor? She's certainly climbing up very fastly, Alex. Very quickly, indeed. His career numbers. 82 wins. Solid ERA. Approaching 400 career strikeouts. 73% of the batters that she faces go back to the dugout and don't reach base. First pitch strike to Chiarella. Yeah, and I mean, just talk about those numbers, just thinking about Kat climbing, especially in the all-time FSU record book, but the number of pitchers that she's doing that amongst. Great. Um, it just speaks to the great pitchers that we've had at Florida State, but then also, you know, just Catherine Sandecox, her talent, her will to get better. She's got to stop, you know, <laughs> her freshman, sophomore year, but just her will to get better. Even as you heard, Alex kind of just hinting at her getting into the weight room, knowing that's something that can help elevate her game. So I'm excited to see what she does this year. I think she'll definitely hit 400 strikeouts. Uh, I'd She'll be definitely. shocked if she, if she didn't. Backed up over at short is Muffley, and she gets the out at third base, and that will retire the side. Ground ball chopped through past Christina Hartley at third, but the heads-up play by Muffley to run over to get the force at third ends the top of the fifth. Still the same score. Florida State up by three. Customary in softball. We need it after the action we've seen so far. Here in Tallahassee at Joanne Graff Field, Trevor DeGroat, Tiffany Brown, Alex Rivero. In the midst of an 8-5 contest between the number sixth ranked Florida State Seminoles and the FGCU Eagles. As coming up to the plate for the first time this evening is Florida State's all-star catcher, Michaela Edenfield. Out of Sneeds, Florida. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's on the tip of their seats waiting on Michaela Enfield to get into her groove a little bit offensively. I mean, but I think she's been doing a great job. It's so hard to – catching is one of the toughest positions on the field, and just the way that she's been able to compartmentalize the two, not obviously, you know, having the best offensive start that she would like and being able to still hold it down as a catcher. So testament to that mental, that mental strength. She always – points to the outside like I'm just <laughs> letting you know blue that that was outside there you go that's what she does it's like I like it I'll make the call for you <laughs> just reminding that you just called that a ball for my pitcher the last half inning just a 241 batting average for Michaela and she draws a four pitch walk very intimidating is Michaela Edenfield and I think teams have learned do not give her anything inside center, anything that's really hittable for her to take that and pull it to left field because that's area 51 territory as is with her number and she has all the power in the world to easily take it out of the yard. Yeah. 
She's getting plugged and placed in the eighth spot in the order as Josie Muffley returns for another plate appearance. So Edenfield subbing in for Bethany Keene. Muffley with a sacrifice bunt and a walk this evening. FGCU's first and third baseman at coming in, and this time Muffley swings it, a floater just into shallow center. Roper's there, however, to track it back. One away. Yeah, probably not what Muffley wanted right there. Just kind of got that off the end of the bat. They had a little, little blooper to Roper, a little easy over the shoulder catch. So turn the lineup over. Let's see what Kaylee Mudge can do. See if they can scratch a couple of more runs here for their pitcher. Bailey Haggard. Trying to settle things down, and the scoring has kind of come down a little bit here. Florida State has scored in every inning thus far. Looking for runs here in the fifth. Facing off now against Kaylee Mudge is Haggard. Yeah, just kind of speaking of that, I mean, I think Haggard came in in a pressure situation. She kind of locked down, got a few quick outs for her team. and Impressive so far, but what she's been able to do in attacking, you know, the Florida State Seminoles in the offense and, and giving her, her, chance, her team the chance to kind of stay in this game. Fires one outside. Solid fastball does ha does Haggard. Oh, this one hits Mudge as she began the swing. That might have caught her on the elbow. That is never any fun. No cushion between that. Take another look where it might have hit her forearm. Oh, nothing you can do, too. I mean, on the arm that's not protected, you can see just such a terrible spot to get hit. Could have been worse. I said elbow at first. That's even worse. <laughs> yeah. you, you kind of fall if you hit elbow. We got a smile. We got a smile. You see the athletic trainer right there, Eunice Hernandez. Big shout out to her. That's my athletic trainer, too. But got a smile from Mudge, so I think we're, think we're good to go. Mac Leonard tees one up. However, Chiarella is there to track it down. Two outs. Tag at second by Edenfield as she makes her way to third. So two outs. Runners on the corners. Testing out Chiarella out there again in right field. Really good job. Her angles going back. And this isn't her home field, but she's made it look pretty easy just tracking down those. Uh, deep fly balls from the Florida State Seminoles. Getting the instructions from the dugout of where to be next. And <laughs> she really hasn't hugged the line too much tonight. No. And really those two plays she's had, the first one in the first inning with Kaylee Mudge had to really work her way to the wall to make the catch hard hit against the right center field wall. So she's had to work to her right a bit and she's been in a pretty solid position to make those catches out there and to deny Florida State some extra base hits. Pitch gets away, Mudge took off running. Edenfield's gonna get home, standing up a little dangerous. Mudge is going to third and she's gonna make it in there safely sliding. So a double steal for Mudge. In spite of the pass ball, and Florida State tacks on another run. Really good base runner right there. You see that ball, Hacker, I think, was supposed to be on the inside, kind of crossed up a catcher there, and Edenfield coming in. But Mudge, really, I think, on the back end is probably the best part of that getting all the way from first to third just on a pass ball just very heads up base runner right there and that's the little things I think that makes Florida State so good. Harding pops it up foul territory first base side and right there is Nikki Gibson and that'll do it but Florida State adds one more. Homer and Chiarella has got an RBI herself and amazingly no strikeouts for FGCU pitching wise that's got nine runs on the board for Florida State. The two-run homer by Dak. Harding's got two doubles on the evening. They've scored in every inning yeah. for Florida State. So it's been a tough go at it for FGCU. They've really tried to put their best foot forward with their pitching. And Florida State, got to give them credit. 
They've just done a nice job of not of putting the just just putting the ball in play, not letting anything get past them, and really picking out good pitches to hit. Yeah, and offensively, if you're a Florida State Seminole, you're kind of watching this game. One thing you take away is the fact that they've scored in every single inning, which is what you want offensively. You want to be able to score without, you know, put up some crooked numbers on the scoreboard because obviously that helps you. You're likely to be more successful. So that's a good takeaway for the Florida State Seminoles. Avery Viancos is now up to bat. Another substitution off the bench for David Deros. Eagles with two more chances here. They have to do it against Florida State's ace and Katherine Sandercock, 0-2 to Biancos out of Orlando, Florida. Young sophomore. Yeah, and I think Dave Dearest is really just looking for a spark plug right now. Who's going to be able to get us started? There's one fouled away. Biancos has played in every game and has actually started 12 of them. Usually patrols in the outfield. Goes patiently waiting for Catherine Sandercock. Another slapper, but goes foul. Now we heard from Alex about how much Catherine Sandercock's really leaving some, leaving obviously her name firmly in the record books of Florida State. She's certainly working it her way up in her final season. Swing and a miss. Strikeouts being one of them. <laughs> she retires Biancos, one away. Such a tough pitch. She makes that pitch look so easy. I mean, it's so hard to really throw inside to lefties, and she does it with ease, really, with that drop ball. And a drop ball, period, is hard to hit, but a drop ball as you're running through the box on the inside corner, I think, is just even harder to hit. So, <laughs> Such effective spin on that drop yeah. ball, and she can place it really anywhere on the bottom of the zone. That one really good too, but just missing 1 0. As Nikki Gibson's in. Sandercock approaching sixth all time in terms of appearances. Sarah Hamilton occupies that spot in the FSU record books with 149. Shout out to Sarah Hamilton. Now White, Sarah White. Sandercock is four saves away from the top mark, held by Leslie Malarich way back when in 2002 is when she wrapped up her career. And then wins wise, Sandercock at 82, it's seventh all time. You know, putting the names as we were talking about, you know, amongst the elite of Florida State pitching, and those names like a Malarich come up, Megan King, Jessica Burroughs. Tiffany McDonald, Casey Hunter, just such a legacy left behind. Large part, obviously, due to the coaching of Lonnie Alameda and Joanne Graff before her. Pitch hit its mark, but outside of the zone, three and one. Yeah, 100%. I mean, those are some of the greatest pitchers here. And even, I, guess, I didn't even mention Lacey Waldrop. Yeah, take, it, take it back. <laughs> All time wins leader at 109. <laughs> Take it back, yeah. I mean, just the the, the history here is rich, uh, especially in the circle. So it's cool just to, to have the opportunity to etch your name in the records book and um, cat to do it with ease. Good scoop over there at third base by Kaylee Harding to retire Gibson. First two away here for FGCU. Cat Sandercock firmly in control. Well, it's really been a chaotic game in a lot of ways here for pitchers tonight. 14 runs total have been scored. Airs in the field. Home runs, extra base hits. Steals all over the place. I think Lonnie Alameda would have probably preferred not to have 
Pat Sandercock come in after last night. And even from the Clearwater Invitational, maybe savor for the rest of the Unconquered Invitational this week. But you know you're in for a fight like FGCU's provided. You don't take anything to chance. Yeah, got to go get the win, right? I mean, put your best out there. And, and if you're, you're Coach D. Rossing the FGCU Eagles, I mean, we want to beat your best too. So it kind of goes hand in hand in a way of put your best out there and then let, let's see if you can beat it. Well, they've got their best hitter at the plate right now in Taylor Phila. Fouls this one back 0-2. Phila entered the week as the leader in the A-Sun Conference with home runs. Really one of the team captains and really the pace setters for this Eagles offense. They go as they go is what Head coach Dave David Diros told me, told us. Still a graduate student trying to get on base for the first time tonight. 0 for 3. Pitch just missing. Top left, one, two. I know we mentioned earlier about her transferring over from South Florida and just the ability, one, that COVID provided, right, to the for the opportunity to have an extra year and then also, and to get your master's if you want it, and then also, too, just the transfer portal and, and what it creates for. And there is that base that she was looking it. for. <laughs> and so Phila comes through with a two-out hit. The a, Eagles can try and generate some offense here in the sixth. Yeah, she was able to kind of join in on the party, kind of highlight that early. But I think really good job that drop ball inside to her, and she does a great job in keeping her hands inside the ball and taking that low pitch, not pulling off of it to pop it up or roll over, but really staying through it, driving it back up the middle. So good job right there. And I think just to kind of finish that thought, just about the transfer portal and the, the opportunity that it provides to teams to get, one, to give the players the opportunity to play more if you're not playing where you are, and then just to make an immediate impact, you know, in some of these conferences, some, some of these teams. It's just such a unique opportunity that the transfer portal offers. Foul the way, and Phil actually had a 12-game hit streak going into last night's doubleheader against USF. Actually, 11 games going into the doubleheader. She got a hit in the first game against the Bulls, but did not come away with one in game two. So looking to start a streak once again. <laughs> not a bad place to do it in Tallahassee. It's the number six team in the country. Another foul by Roper. And is behind 0-2. Well, as we said, this is the start of the Unconquered Invitational. FGCU, Florida State, getting kicking things off. And Lamar and Troy will be joining the party beginning tomorrow. Fouled away once again. The Eagles will be taking on Troy on Friday and against Florida State once again tomorrow. And on Saturday, they'll take on Troy and then end with Lamar. For the Seminoles, they'll get two double headers in a row over the next two days. First Lamar, then FGCU, then Lamar again, and then Troy on Saturday. Popped up right over to Josie Muckley. And so none cross the plate. Florida State maintains a four-run lead headed to the bottom of the state capital of Florida. They will remain at home, Tiffany, for quite a bit of time. Of course, we mentioned this is the start of the Unconquered Invitational tonight. They're going to stay at home through March 5th before going on the road to wrap up non-conference play against as tough of a slate as you can find. As you see, Katie Dack starting things off here in the sixth with Bailey Haggard. They're going to start things off, you know, on the road again with Oklahoma State on the road, number three currently in the country, and then just a one-gamer against 
you know, head coach Lonnie Alameda's alma mater in Oklahoma in Norman on March 14th before beginning ACC play. And really, when you look at their entire schedule, with the exception of the game against the arch rival Florida Gators on April 26th, every ranked opponent they're going to face is on the road. They're going to face the likes, as we mentioned, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, Duke, Clemson, Virginia Tech, and then once again with the Gators all on the road. Yeah. I mean, again, I think it just really just goes to putting them in uncomfortable situations. You're not playing in front of your home fans. You're going into a hostile environment, right? Let's see what you can do. Let's see how you respond. And then also just preparing you for where you want to be at the end of the year, which is in Oklahoma, right, at the Women's College World Series. And that's not your home field, right? You're in technically what's a hostile environment with fans cheering for different teams against you for you and so really just preparing them for where they want to be at the end of the year and 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 putting them against the best if you want to be the best you got to beat the best and so you know those some of those teams are top in the nation just give them the opportunity katie dak at the top of the lineup in terms of batting average she is on fire still and gets a double already with the home run tonight Katie Dak well on her way to being a big name here in Florida State softball. Transfer from Texas A&M, making Tallahassee home sweet home. Yeah, I mean, she's doing it with the bat, honestly. Just taking that pitch again, up in the zone, middle of the plate, really using the big part of the part. I think that's the most important thing. So really just learn, staying through those pitches, not really yanking them down the line. And you see her sliding in. To second base, I love the chuckle. <laughs> got to get used to You got to shoot the arrow. Got to shoot the arrow, Dak. And so Bailey Haggard will only face Katie Dak here in the sixth. So pitching change from David Deros coming up here. Yeah, and Haggard really, I mean, she did a good job. I mean, she came in, like I said, in a pressure situation. She was able to hold it down. Got a few quick outs, really just Dave Deros is understanding, hey, let's just put a new arm in there. Let's see if we can hold them to where Florida State is and see if we can get some runs. We'll take another break here and introduce you to FGCU's new pitcher and trying to get things right. And first of all, making sure <laughs> that Caridad's teammates are good with having her get her pitching card all set up with the the wristband and the armband. Need some glue, need some tape. Help me out here, friends. She definitely needs that or else it might get a little crazy if they're not on the same page with what pitches are being called. Otherwise, it's a lot of right head turns. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what am I doing? She's still going to do that probably no matter what as she gets the signal from the dugout. But she's ready to go now. Left-hander taking on Devin Flaherty. Out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Transfer over from Ball State in Indiana. Yeah, her job really right now is to keep the score where it is. See if she can get a goose egg for Florida State here. Another night where Florida State's just getting runs in almost every inning, and they've done that in this game. Took Florida State until the fourth last night against North Florida Ospreys to get going, but after that it was pretty smooth sailing to come away with a 4-3 win. 3-0 now. Of course, we talked about how difficult Florida State's been with two outs. They just not, they just do not die. They do not go away. <laughs> it's, it's like in the in the opponent's mind, it'd be like, we just stop already. Well, it's like that net that's just like, you know, you're still here. <laughs> two outs, man. Well, you got to give, got to get some pitches over the plate to come away with that result. And so far for Estes, not the case. Four pitch walk to Flaherty and now Janai Kerr. Last time she made an appearance in a sixth inning, she hit the game winning home run. That was last night against North Florida. She got two runners on, nobody out. Pitch just outside, 1-0. Yeah, and Estes, I mean, she's throwing some competitive pitches. Just Blue said they're a ball. So, you know, just 
really got to find his strike zone right now if you're Estes and work to just get settled in. And just on the flip side, if I'm the Florida State Seminole, I'm taking notes that so far she's thrown for the most part, you know, six balls in a row. And so I'm not swinging until you throw me a straight. <laughs> That's usually the case of how all works out or the mindset. Although Janai Kerr does not take your advice, Tiffany, but you know what? She pulls through with a pull to the right field line and she will get home Avery Weisbrook, who was pinch running for Katie Deck. And so it's double digits now for Florida State. 10 to five here in the bottom of the sixth and runners in scoring position, Kerr with the double. Yeah, when you're doing as good as Janai Kerr and seeing a pitch, Hitting ball, she does a great job. The ball up and in, kind of on those hands and taking it to down the right field line. But you're hitting as good as her right now. I mean, don't listen to me. Go ahead, you <laughs> swing, girl, you swing. <laughs> you know what you're doing. It's sound advice, nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, but at the same time, you know, it's so hard to deny a pitch that you like that's in your wheelhouse. Yeah. And for that one, for Kerr, kind of works out really nicely. And really, you've seen a lot of hits for Kerr, you know, opposite field as of late. But that one inside, inner half of the plate just takes that one. And so quick work for Estes as she goes. Angelina Bonilla will come back in. Angelina Bonilla, the junior. Steps into the circle out of Coral Gables, Florida. 4-2-0 earned run average on the year. Takes on Hallie Waycaser. First pitch strike from Bonilla. 0-2 on the season, making her seventh appearance. 20 strikeouts to eight walks. Ooh, off speed. Gets Waycaser way out in front. That's a good look right there. Nice looking pitch. From Bonilla jumping into the game, trying to lock down the offense of Florida State Seminoles. Needs to do it quickly, too. Runners in scoring position. Waycasers found quite a bit of a hot bat as of late. Fouls this one away, 0 and 2. Waycaser 2 for 3 tonight. Getting the start in right field. Entered the game hitting 310. Now one and two. Wake case is another one of those players, Tiffany, that's really started to chomp at the bit in terms of getting every opportunity. Player who was trying to fight for time last year. Just a part of the growth of Florida State. But has taken advantage really of a lot of opportunities that's presented to her. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what you got to do. I mean, when you're in, you know, kind of one of those positions where you're fighting for the opportunity to get into that starting lineup consistently or, you know, getting the at bats, when you get the opportunity, you got to take advantage of it. And that doesn't mean you got to get a hit, right? I mean, because you can't control that, but quality at bats, you know, hitting the ball hard. And here's a hard hit shot, liner into left center that's going to roll to the back of the wall. Back of the yard it goes, and Waycaser with a double, and two runs cross the plate. Flaherty and Kerr score, and Florida State has their biggest lead of the night. Extended now to seven, 12 to five. Seminole's starting to run away with this one. Yeah. Wade Kaser does a great job. Again, I think that off speed, but was able to recognize that pitch. She got fooled earlier in her bat, but was able to recognize that pitch and drive it to what has become, it seems, a hot commodity out there in left center gap. But that's what you want to see if you're the hitting coach. You know, you want to see the, the team, the ladies hitting the big part of the field. That means they're really staying through it. They're not, you know, too far ahead. They're not yanking it down the line. So really good offensive approach um, for the Florida State Seminoles. Someone might have to check out there in left center field that there's a, a big giant magnet that's drawing the ball. It must be. It's been insane how many shots have been hit to that part of the park. 
at least over the last two days that we've been here. It must be. And, you know, you, you highlight it kind of just right now, seven-run lead for the Florida State Seminoles. If you're FGCU, you've got to know, even though we're late in the game, that eight-run rule is still in effect. So, way case right now is technically the winning run. you got to play that way to kind of keep this game going. The game-ending run, one yeah. might say. Edenfield, this one off the glove of Phila. And here comes Waycaser. And that will wrap things up as Edenfield, <laughs> she's caught in the middle, but she will end up in third. And that will do it, folks. And a big smile for Michaela Edenfield. Florida State puts that eight run rule into effect and they come away with a 13 to five victory over FGCU. Yeah, Edenfield, good for her, right? Kind of taking that outside pitch and just yanking it down the line. <laughs> right off the glove there, Fila at third base. And Waycase, a great job freezing on the line drive, seeing that ball down and able to score the game-ending run right there, that eight run for the Florida State Seminoles to wrap it up. So stretching out was Edenfield to end.